Hello, in part 4 of this series we'll conclude the classification of pitch class sets with the Hindemith chord grouping scheme and apply 6 element sets to Schillinger diatonic symmetric chord progressions. In this tutorial we will look at an orchestral example in impressionistic style. and the Tarantella for Wind Quintet. Remember that this series is about harmony tension level control. There's an extension to the Schillinger diatonic symmetric harmony system by introducing pitch class sets after a chord group classification according to Hindemith. This episode focuses on PC sets with 6 elements and there will be 2 examples discussed in detail. In the Schillinger system, there's the diatonic symmetric harmony system, which is characterized by the separation of the diatonic bass part from the upper parts. These are based on a given set of chord structures from which a chord progression is constructed. In atonal music, we may discern a limited set of 3 to 9 element pitch class sets, with pitch classes from the chromatic scale. Each set has a label, a prime form, and interval class vector. Musical compositions use specific set properties. Here the idea is to use PC sets as chord structures in the Schillinger harmony system. In order to stay in line with the extended tonality concept of the diatonic symmetric system and enabling harmony tension level control, we categorize the sets using the Hindemith chord classification scheme that consists of six groups depending on the interval content. All this was discussed in more detail in part 1 to 3 from this series. We'll now look at the pitch class sets with cardinal number 6. There's a total of 56 element sets and we use the interval class factor for each of these in order to put them into a Hindemith chord group. Remember the importance of N6, the number of tritones in the set as a main category divider, followed by the number of dissonant second intervals, that is N1 and N2. The result for the 6 element sets is no sets in group 1, the triads, and 6 sets rejected because they are cluster type chords. This is debatable as Hindemith himself shows set 6-7, also with many closely packed pitches, as a valid example. One set goes into group 2, the extended dominant 7 chords, and 4 sets fall in group 3, with minor and major seconds, but no tritone. The majority, that is 39 sets out of 50, lie in group 4, since they contain one or more tritones and sharp dissonances such as the minor 2nd or major 7th. In his book, Hindemith presents 4 examples of such 6 note chords and no examples with more than 6 notes. I obviously will not present all 56 element sets. I'll make a selection and demonstrate possible voicings that distribute the dissonant intervals in such a way that they minimize the dissonance and can be used in a quasi-tonal idiom. I start with the four Hindemith chord examples from his book. There's the Holton cluster in group 2 and the B-flat over C minor polychord in group 3. PC set labels are shown above the staff. His other two example chords are from the dissonant high tension level group 4. I present possible voicings for both original and inverted forms of the sets, as indicated below the staff. These have identical interval quality. Next I present all 4 6 element pitch class sets in group 3. Below the staff, now you will also find the Hindemith chord root, as determined by the root of the lowest perfect fifth in the structure. I deliberately show voicings where the root is equal to the bass part.
My selection from the six element sets in the high tension level group 4 is based on the number of minor and major third intervals. I choose sets with the sum n3 plus n4 is 7. This property makes them somewhat familiar to traditional chords built in thirds. Above the staff I show the set label and interval vector. Below the staff we see the original and inverted transposed form of the set. Note that now the Hindemith root pitch is not always in the bass part. These are inverted chord structures with reduced stability compared to their root position equivalents. I'll present two short compositions that are based on chord progressions with six element pitch class sets in the diatonic symmetric harmony system. Example 1 uses the four Hindemith example chords in a progression in C mixolydian mode. There's a pre planned tension curve using sets from the Hindemith groups 2 to 4. The bass part consists of many positive root cycles and has cadential closing. On the lower staff, I show the Hindemith root. Note how the voicing is in root position at the opening and closing chord. I've also indicated the leading tone for chords in groups 2 and 4. This aspect I leave for a later episode. This is a constant density 6 part setting and I've marked the resolution of the altered non-diatonic notes in the upper parts. Some alterations move in the expected direction, these are the green arrows. Remember that there is no obligation for correct voice leading in this system, as indicated by the orange arrows. I'll turn this progression into an orchestral setting, a quasi-impressionistic mood piece with a Debussy flavor. I will use only pitches from the current PC set in order to obtain a clear exercise. In my setting I will use common subsets in order to create consistency through uniting patterns, such as the woodwind arpeggios and the sustained harmony voicing for low brass and strings. Here we see the 3 and 4 element subsets in the 6 chord progression, and I've marked the common subsets. Here's the audio rendering in an annotated condensed score.
Hopefully you agree that this example has considerable tonal character. I've applied several mechanisms that prevent the use of PC sets yielding an atonal texture. Example 2 uses the sets from group 3 and 4 with maximum number of thirds that I've demonstrated earlier in this episode. The diatonic scale is A Dorian minor, with a plagal closing. I use those set transformations that maximize the number of pitches from the diatonic scale. Use my online PC set inspection tool for sketching chord progressions and evaluating set properties. Again, I write chords and root position at important structural positions, as indicated by the Hindemith chord root. Also, this example is constant density with a six part setting. The resolution of the altered notes in the upper parts is marked with arrows. This time we use a chamber music instrumentation for wind quintet. They play a fast tarantella in an idiom reminding of composer Jean Francais, who wrote a set of wonderful neoclassical wind quintets. Again, all notes in the parts belong to the current pitch class set. In this example I chose as the common element the major minor triad subsets, as shown in this table. Whenever there's a pair of major minor triads on the same root, I decided to use these as so-called gamma chords, a label assigned by Erne Lendvai in his book on the music of Bela Bartok and Zoltan Kodai. I've used alpha to gamma chords extensively for a special chorus for brass in my Autumn Leaves arrangements for symphonic wind band, but that deserves a separate video tutorial. Read along with the annotated score. In summary, I've completed the Hindemith chord group classification for pitch class sets with cardinal number between 3 and 6. I will not repeat this exercise for higher number of elements. I've shown how this classification creates a mechanism for modern harmony tension level control. In all episodes I've demonstrated the application of these set-based chord structures in Schillinger diatonic symmetric chord progressions. 
Hopefully you now share my enthusiasm about this technique and you have been encouraged to experiment with the application of PC sets. What remains to be done is the discussion of the Hindemith considerations for connecting cords within or between groups. There are some differences with the Schillinger system that will be presented in the next episode in this series. If you like these tutorials, please subscribe or add a comment. Help increasing the visibility of this YouTube channel. On the website there is more content and a donation button. All support is welcome. Thanks for watching.